Hey, everybody. We are so thrilled you are with us and tonight. And I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. Oh, today is the launch of Your Brain is Always Listening. Tame the hidden dragons that control your happiness, habits, and hang-ups. And I'm Dr. Daniel Amen, and with me is my partner in so many ways, my wife, Tana Amen, and she is going to help me um, really celebrate the yeah. launch of the book. And given that we're not having book launch parties right. in person, we thought we'd invite 17,000 of our close friends. <laughs> and we had 17,000 people crazy. sign up to see us tonight. Now, we realize not everybody's going to show up in the age of COVID, but we are going to um, record this. Mm -hmm. And then send the recording out uh, later on. Um, so we thank you for coming. Um, Tana is going to help me. So for those of you that don't know, Tana has a new book. Sort of a crazy time for us. This came out in January. The Relentless Courage of a Scared Child. And a lot of the things we're going to talk about tonight, yeah. you talk about. Well, they're very complimentary. In the book. Yeah. So this is sort of the scary childhood that created 10 of the dragons. And your brain is always listening, helps you tame them. And it's really based on work Tana and I have done together over the last 15 years, and she's just an incredible partner. I love uh, everything we do together. We've done almost a thousand Brain Warriors Way podcasts. Mm -hmm. So if you like Crazy. tonight and you just want to, you know, wake up and listen to something motivating, helpful, uh, you can go to brainwarriorswaypodcast.com and for free, listen mm -hmm. to. All of the podcast. So um, what we're going to do tonight is a big part of your brain is always listening is a brand new 12 step program uh, <laughs> to get control of the dragons, the demons that really um, control <clears throat> your brain and uh, we came up with the idea of dragons based on a friend of ours, Dr. Sharon May, who's a relationship therapist who talked about the dragons from the past that breathe fire on your emotional brain. Um, Uh-oh, I lost her. Um, well, I'm hoping she comes back. So there you see the dragon breathing fire on your brain. And she had a coughing fit. So <laughs> it wasn't her way of telling me she was leaving me after all this time. It's not COVID. It's not COVID. We both. <laughs> uh, but I figured it's better not to cough on you. On camera. set? Yes. Are you better? <laughs> I'm better. Thank you. OK. So um, your brain has been listening to this <laughs> pandemic. And uh, it's not been a good thing no, for so many year. people. <clears throat> Everybody's stressed, anxious, depressed. Depression tripled from March to August. And I haven't seen updated numbers, but it's not good. Suicide's the highest I've ever seen it. Substance abuse is way up. And it's affecting <clears throat> the elderly because of the isolation and <clears throat> loneliness. Isolation, by the way, is a risk factor for Alzheimer's disease and depression. And we've really seen it affect children. Right. Especially even in our own house. We've got three teenagers in the house, and it just um, we really had to work with them a lot this year on their skills and taming their own dragons. Um, divorce, family issues <clears throat> are skyrocketing. Um, and the book is actually divided 
into five big sections. So the first section, the dragons from the past. So these are the big psychological issues that are breathing <clears throat> fire on your emotional brain. And if you want to know your dragons, you knowyourdragons.com. So I love this quiz. Um, apparently, I'm the poster child for the dragons. I have 10 of them. Is that a record? I think that's <laughs> close. So I've got 10 of the dragons. So <clears throat> whatever your dragons are, don't worry about it. It just means that it's something that happened to you in the past that is, you know, either is or did affect you somehow. And because of that, you got me this cool little dragon necklace. And it's to <clears throat> sort of signify, it's, isn't this beautiful? This is like, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a beautiful dragon necklace. And we did this because this signifies being able to put your dragons on a chain. You can tame your dragons. So go to knowyourdragons.com and you can identify your dragons. And then we like give you a plan and you start to like understand what you can do for them. And then why don't you talk about these? Mm. They, them, and other dragons. So I've always wondered who they is, right? <laughs> it's like they said, they did. <coughs> But they can be so many people that um, haunt you. So your parents, siblings, um, sometimes depending on your birth order, your children. <laughs> you're always hearing Chloe's voice in Always, your head. yes. Like in your children, if you ever want to know what you're doing wrong in life, <laughs> Have children. your children will make sure you know this, right? Teachers and coaches, um, friends. The popular kids, if you weren't one of the popular kids, or even if you were one of the popular kids. Which most people were not one of the popular kids. Right, but if you kids. are one of the popular kids, then you're always <laughs> trying to keep up and keep that spot, right? More. Bullies. More. Right, more. We're going to talk about the molecule of more tonight. Right. Uh, former, current, and prospective lovers. And I'm always hearing your voice in my head. Right. <laughs> Internet trolls. We know a little bit about that. And society in general. And your brain is always listening to bad habit dragons. Whatever you allow your brain to do, it's going to continue to do. Habits that result from dragon influences and increase your chances of being overweight, depressed, and having <clears throat> brain fog. I've been doing some Instagram and Facebook live chats. Uh, you did one with me together on the yes, 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 and mm -hmm. no, 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 right. bad habit, dragons. Uh, I don't think I have the yes, 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 though. You do not. You have the no, no, no. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, then there's the scheming dragons. So these are really important, especially when it comes to your health and the health of your family. These are things like food pushers and un unhealthy health. So this is a really interesting one. So all of the unhealthy health food that's out there, right? These are scheming dragons. Substance use, toxin pushers, so all of the products that we use, um, digital media, things like this, porn, newsmongers. I have to turn the news off. That's one of my big ones. Um, People who watch the news in the morning are 27% less happier. Oh. In for the sure. afternoon. I for and sure that totally to. relates to you. I will scream at the TV within five minutes. Um, social media. It's very interesting. Her dragons are still real. Yeah. No, I'll start screaming at and the TV. And if you get in between her and the TV, it burns. <laughs> um, contact sports and the holiday dragons. So, how, like, how many people out there during the holidays, these, your dragons start to flare up, right? Because of family issues or substance abuse issues that start to get worse or finances or, I mean, so many things that happen during the holidays. And then they're the ants that feed the dragon. So the ant stands for automatic negative thoughts, the thoughts that come into your mind automatically and ruin your day. Like everyone out there who has a panic disorder is masterful. Your fortune telling aunt is ruling your life mm -hmm. where you're predicting the worst and then making it worse still. And then finally, there's the addicted dragon recovery program. So this is what we're gonna talk about tonight and it'll help you 
if you're depressed. It'll help you if you have PTSD. It'll help you if you're anxious. And it'll help you if you have an addiction or the bad habit dragons running your life. So we're going to spend our time talking about this. Before we do, um, only until Sunday, March 7th, if you order uh, your brain is always listening, um, we actually have four free gifts. We really want to give the dragons a good start in the world. Uh, if you order the book or if you have pre-ordered it, thank you. Make sure you go to yourbrainisalwayslistening.com and you can download worksheets that we put together that help summarize uh, the book, including a guide to supplementing your brain, feel better fast techniques, the science of change through something we call tiny habits. We'll talk about um, the principles of Amen Clinics. You'll also get a free special event with me, maybe Tan, if I can get her to come along with me. I know it's St. Patrick's I Day. I'll follow you anywhere. I'd love that. <laughs> uh, where this is just for people who pre ordered the book or ordered the book, I'm going to answer <laughs> your question. So I'm going to spend two hours with Tana. Apparently now she's committed uh, <laughs> on the 17th. Um, you also get a special download of a program I love uh, and have offered on public television a number of times, uh, six hypnosis sessions, including ones for anxiety, sleep, chronic pain, weight loss, smoking. And my favorite one that I actually did for Tim, right. I recorded it for her when she got her black belt test, her first black belt on peak performance. Yeah, Hypnosis really is so helps. powerful and helps tame your dragons. Uh, but my favorite gift of all of them is you get a free coupon for a bottle of Happy Saffron. So <laughs> it's a $50 value. It's something everybody in my house takes every day. Um, saffron has been found in 21 randomized controlled trials to be as effective <laughs> as antidepressant medication to support your mood. And rather than sort of knock off your libido, it enhances sexual interest and performance. It's been shown to help with memory. There's just so many benefits. It's got saffron, zinc, and curcumins. So all you have to do is order the book at one of these places, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, um, Books A Million, Tyndale, anywhere great books are sold. And then go to yourbrainisalwayslistening.com, enter your order number, and you instantly get access to these free bonuses. Okay, so we're done with a commercial. <clears throat> So I've been really blessed this year. Uh, Dr. Phil has really embraced my work and understands it. And I have been a guest on his show seven times this season. Mm -hmm. And he has sent me some really interesting cases. Uh, the last one that hasn't aired yet, I mean, it's really wild. Um, but I want to actually start this with a case of somebody I saw on his show 10 years ago, Jose, who the show is about cheaters mm -hmm. and, you know, who cheats on their spouse. And I evaluated five people, but one of them was Jose, who cheated on his wife eight times in the four years they were together and she had a gun and she was going to shoot him and that just makes great television so I ended up on Dr. You, Phil. But you start to see how domestic violence escalates quickly. Well, that it's because often a reaction. Because there's passion and anger and, right, and and jealousy. When you're connected to someone, um, you hurt when you feel like you're going to get disconnected. Right. There's and sometimes a the hurt turns to anger. And when I evaluated him, you can see he has sleepy frontal lobes. So the front part of your brain is actually the dragon tamer. There's a whole section in the book on how to protect and strengthen your dragon tamer. 
And for whatever reason, not every patient I see are like Jose. Jose did everything I asked him to do. And my patients go, what do I need to do to get better? Do what I ask you to do. It works. And he did. And one of the first things I asked him is, what do you want? That's step one. And he didn't want his daughter to grow up in a broken home mm. like he did. So knowing his why. Knowing his why. He took the supplements I recommended. He ate differently. He lost weight. His goal was to go get his nursing degree, which he did. And um, we, taught them, we taught him these two words. Then what? These are the most important two words in the English language when it comes to your mental and physical health. Then what? If I cheat, well, then what happens? Is his daughter is going to grow up in a broken home, and he might get shot. Uh, then what? Right. Um, if he says something that's hurtful, if he flirts with another woman, that's hurtful. So thinking about the future. And if you talk to people who aren't able to grasp this, who, like you said, this is the most important thing. If you talk to people who don't seem to get it, they continue down the, the path that they're going that's very hurtful and destructive. I've spoken to a couple of these people who it's like they just they keep lying to themselves about what will happen if they do it. And you can see that happen over and over and over. They never grasp the then what. So it's a learning problem. Mm -hmm. And often because their frontal lobes are sleepy. Seven months after I started seeing Jose, it was clearly getting better. And he and his wife decided they wanted to have another child. Now, for me, I'd, if I was his wife, I'd have made him wait three years to see if it really <laughs> stuck. Um, but they went to Hawaii on vacation, and he saw people jumping off a cliff. And that's Jose. He's an excitement-seeking, drama-driven, let's have fun, let's take it to the edge. Um, and when he got up to the top of the hill where people were jumping off the cliff, he looked down and he couldn't see the bottom of the pool people were jumping into. And it was a natural pool. He didn't know if there were rocks under there. And he began to go, well, what if I land wrong? And what if I break my neck? And what if things don't turn out well? Then what? Then what? And he actually turned around and walked down the hill. And his wife said, are you OK? And he's like, you know, I just don't need to do that anymore. And when he told me the story, I knew I had fixed his frontal lobes. And so if you look at his scan before and then after mm -hmm. seven months, this is the big lesson from our work is you can have a better brain. Yeah. And with a better brain comes a better life. With a better brain comes a better marriage. With a better brain comes being a better father, having a better family. Everything starts with the brain. And so Jose was working at a low-level job when I met him. He wanted to be a nurse. And he got into nursing school. And then he wanted to be a nurse anesthetist. And here he is working That's as a nurse. Cool. And I am so proud of him. Um, it's very cool. With a better brain, you get more money. You have a cooler job. You have more stability. You have more stability. And this is Jose <clears throat> and his family. So very proud of him. It's very cool. OK, step number one, got to know what you want. What are your goals? and you want to do it in a balanced way, Tan and I have an exercise called the One Page Miracle. On one piece of paper, write down what you want. Yeah, if you don't know the what, and if you don't know your why, you'll never do the what, but you got to know what you want as well. And so we work together. We're together with the pandemic all the time. The one question um, that you should always ask yourself before you ask someone to marry you. This is the new question that came out in 2020, is can I be with you 24-7? <laughs> yes. <laughs> if there's no golf, will we still love each other? I actually feel like we've done better 
during this time almost because you you have to be home i love being home yeah. you know people want me to get in and a like plane and travel home. somewhere no i'd rather hang out with my best friend yeah. but you know part of it is intentional um that this is our goal mm -hmm. for our yeah, relationship we're still human we're still normal we still you know we have to we still work at it it's not like we don't work well, at it. But, but let's just be really clear, and let's talk about this now. Um, if you want to be healthy, if you want to have a healthy body, it's not something you can do once. It, yeah, it doesn't it, just happen. <laughs> it, it's not something that you go four times and you go, oh, therapy didn't work yeah, for me. Yeah, you don't wish it into existence. It's something like your diet that needs to happen day after day after day. These 12 steps are lifestyle interventions and this first one. And the traditional 12 steps actually start with your life is out of control. That's step one. Admit your life is out of control. And I don't mean to demean the 12 steps at all. I've sent people to 12-step programs for 40 years um, but they clearly don't work for everyone and as I was working on this book I started rethinking of them as a neuroscientist would think of them and it doesn't start that your life is out of control that's step two step one is what do you want you have to tell your brain what you want and then ask yourself every day, is my behavior getting me what I want? So with Tana, I want a kind, caring, loving, supportive, passionate relationship. I always want that. Right. I don't always feel like that. I get these rude thoughts that come into my head. <laughs> And no. mostly I inhibit them. <laughs> I must say this to and my patients. And when he doesn't, I'm good at helping him inhibit them. <laughs> I must say this to my patients five times a week. You do not have to say every stupid thing you think. Filter it through, does it fit? Does it fit the goals I have for my life? Mm -hmm. does and, and one thing I always ask myself is like, because sometimes I'll find myself getting worked up and you know over something, and I'm like, "Is it worth it? Like, why does this matter? What's going to come of this? It, <clears throat> maybe you win an argument, you lose, you know, what your your, your big goal is. Like, why is it you worth it? You lose respect, right? And what, you what's the lose point? Lose connection, right? Um, so like, who cares? important. All right. So one page miracle. Know what you want. And then ask yourself, does your behavior fit the goals you have for your life? Relationships, work, money, physical, emotional, spiritual health. Step two. Why don't you take step two? Know when you've been taken hostage. Um, so... Um, knowing when you've been taken hostage is if your behavior gets you into trouble. So if, like with addiction, relationships, work, money, health, the law, you have to know when you've got a problem with addiction, with your brain, your mind, your relationships, your, like your spirituality. What do you do? And do you do it again? So how do you know if you have a problem with these things? Do you do, like, do, you do something that gets you into trouble in any of these areas? And do you learn from it? Or do you continue with the bad behavior? So has your brain been hijacked so that you don't learn from your bad behavior and you continue to make these dumb decisions that get you into trouble over and over? Yeah, and a lot of people go, well, I'm not an addict. Uh, or I don't have an addiction. I can control it if I want to. The problem is their behavior, as Tana said, got them into trouble, and then they kept doing it. Right. It's like they don't learn. So, an example: I have I, there's someone that I know closely that I've that I've we I've tried to coach in the past, and uh, was an addict, got into a lot of a lot of legal problems, a lot of personal problems, a lot of I mean relationship problems. Their life was basically just sabotaged, and 
started to get things back together and then decided, made the conscious decision that they could become a social drinker. So chose friends that they decided to become a social drinker with and said, I've decided I can now be, after all this time, after a year of not drinking, I can now handle alcohol and I can become a social drinker. Well, how long did you think it take would take for that person to completely spiral back down to ground zero? It's like you're not learning from your behavior at that point. And that's step two. <clears throat> your life has been hijacked. And here's the real reason not to use drugs is they damage your brain. And if they damage your brain, ultimately they damage every area of your life. And that leads us to step three, which in the anonymous 12 steps, there's no neuroscience. And I'm like, you're never going to beat an addiction if you don't start to love balance and repair your brain. And what we have learned is if you want to keep your brain healthy or rescue it if it's headed to the dark place, you have to prevent or treat the 11 major risk factors that steal your mind. And we don't have time to go into all of it tonight, but for example, I just but finished- But you go into detail in the book. I, I go into detail in the end of mental illness and memory rescue. I mention it in your brain is always listening um, because it's just a foundational principle mm -hmm. for the book. And the tiny habit the smallest thing you can do for your brain today is ask yourself this question. Is this good for my brain or bad for it? And if you can answer that question with information and love, love of yourself, love of your wife, love of your family, your mission, you're going to start making better decisions. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness, oh, this is a big one. Um, so forgiveness is not just about forgiving other people, it's about forgiving yourself. So when you are, um, when you've got dragons from the past, you've got addiction, you've got anything that you're trying to work on, shame, um, even when people have been through trauma, they have trouble forgiving themselves. But behavior is way more complicated than we think. Behavior is complicated and you've got to learn how to forgive yourself. So, um, you know. Well, I think just knowing. Right that behavior is more complicated, that there's actually a brain It's easy to call people complaint. bad. It's harder to ask why. So we like this um, idea of reach for forgiveness, which is you recall the event that happened to you, and then you learn to have empathy for the person, and this can take some time, to have empathy for the person that hurt you. And then you altruistically give the gift of forgiveness and then you commit to it. C is commit to it, and then H is hold on to it. And I know at first it sounds like I've heard a lot of people say, but they don't deserve it. So one thing I often tell people is, okay, I know you feel like they don't deserve it right now, but do you? Do you deserve to have the peace that comes with forgiveness? Because as long as you don't forgive, it's like drinking poison and expecting someone else to die. So forgiveness and, for, and not forgiving yourself, if you don't forgive yourself, you're also less likely to forgive other people. But not forgiving yourself is just holding yourself hostage forever. And that also leads you to be more, leaves you more likely to be stuck in addiction because people will self -medicate. Or whatever bad behavior. Right. And empathy for yourself, it's, it's one of the reasons I just love the brain imaging work we do at Amen Clinic so much. Um, Laura Cleary and her husband Stephen Hilton and I posted goodness, I think four videos now. Um, you can see them on our Instagram or on Laura Cleary's Facebook. And Stephen suffered with depression his whole life. And he remembers it as a child. Um, he remembers methamphetamines really helped him. Uh, and then he suffered with addiction and alcohol. Mm -hmm. And when I scanned him, and he's a very accomplished mm -hmm. musician. Um, he worked on movies mm -hmm. that are monster famous, like Transformers, and, um, but always struggled with this depression and thought it was him. Well, he was dropped down a flight of stairs and was unconscious when he was three. 
and you could clearly see the evidence of brain trauma uh, on his scan and just seeing it wasn't him, it was his brain that could be better. Um, and the supplements I put him on uh, and then teaching him these 12 steps just made a huge positive difference for him, but also for his wife and for his baby. This is really important. Mm -hmm. Behavior is way more complicated than most people think. And then step five is know your brain type. This is really important. It's one of the big lessons from Imogen is everybody's <clears throat> brain is a bit different. Some people have balanced brains. Some people are impulsive or spontaneous. They have sleepy frontal lobes. Some people are persistent. Their frontal lobes work too hard and they tend to be worried, rigid, and flexible. If things don't go their way, they get upset. Um, some people are sensitive, so those are the empaths among us. Some people are cautious, often anxious. M most of us have combinations of these types. So the 12-step program traditionally sort of thinks is everybody the same. Well, everybody's not the same. Right. It's like everybody doesn't respond to Prozac. Everybody who's ADD doesn't respond to Ritalin. We need to target the treatment to your type. So here are two spec scans. This is a healthy scan, full, even, symmetrical activity with most of the activity in the back bottom part of the brain. And people who are spontaneous or impulsive tend to have sleepy frontal lobes. People who are persistent, their frontal lobes tend to work too hard. Um, <clears throat> people who are sensitive, the limbic or emotional part of their brains are busy. People who are cautious, the anxiety centers of their brain are working too hard. Do you think we should do the same treatments for everybody? No, that's insane. We need to target the treatment to your type, which is why we have nine Amen clinics and 40 physicians, and you know we see thousands of patients every month. I'm so grateful for the work that we get to do in helping people. So lock up the craving dragon. Um, so this is a big one. So I talk a lot about boundaries. <clears throat> Setting boundaries with other people is so important in just about every area of your life. To be able to set healthy boundaries, to be firm and kind, is really important. But we have to be able to talk about setting boundaries with yourself first. If you can't set boundaries with yourself, it's very difficult to set boundaries in other places in your life. And this is very true when it comes to cravings. So we want to make sure that you are paying attention to your cravings and you know how to stop this. So the best way to reduce stress in your life is to stop screwing up. Roy Baumeister said this. PhD. From his book, Willpower. Yeah. So you want to learn to make better decisions and control mm -hmm. your cravings, you got to get your brain right. Right. So make better decisions. Um, so we already said this, you need to know your why. You got to know your motivation. If you don't know your why, you can't really do your what very effectively. Um, your why is your leverage. It's, it's how you get your passion and your motivation to get up in the morning and get going. And then you do your what. So we talked about the one page miracle. That's a really great way to get your what. So get it all on one page. I tell people to put it on their mirror and look at it every single day. So it's like when you have a to-do list even, you wanna be able to see it so you don't forget about it, right? Well, having that what right in front of you is really important. And then say, then what? And then what? If I right. do this, then what happens? Does it fit the goals? I have for my life. So it's not about what you should and shouldn't do. It's what do you right. want? What Does do you, your I behavior do fit what you want? Right. And then make sure you have stable blood sugar. So this is really important. We've got we've got people in our house that get very, very hangry. Um, not me, of course, but my daughter. She's lying. <laughs> this is a lie right there. Call it out. So my daughter, Chloe, from the time she was little, wow, she I couldn't figure it out. She'd wake up from nap. She'd be the sweetest. We'd be having fun, sweet, playful. 
go to sleep, take a nap, wake up, and was like demon child. I was like, what is happening with this child? Then I'd give her you know, a snack and she would be like sweet again. And we figured out it's the hangry thing. Make sure you have stable blood sugar because that's gonna help you make better decisions. So there's a great, um, we've talked about this before, but it's really important. Um, there's a great study that was done at Emory, was it done at Emory, and they did it with married couples. There were 107 married couples. They tested their blood sugar at the end of the day. And then they gave them voodoo dolls. So the couples that had the lowest blood sugar put the most pins into the voodoo dolls. They asked them to, th to like, um, at the express end of the day, they expressed feelings. their feelings and then put pins in the voodoo dolls based on how they felt. The couples with the lowest blood sugar <coughs> put the most pins in the voodoo dolls. So it's really interesting. So I feed you. You feed me, yeah. And I don't really put pins in you. you most sure? of the time. I have this backache. You sure it's not you? It's acupuncture, honey. It's okay. okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and make sure you're getting sleep. So sleep is important. Seven to eight hours of sleep is, is very important for, for decision making. And little to no alcohol. So um, we know people are going to, you know, there are some people who are drinking socially, but pay attention to how much you're drinking. And, you, and like, two drinks a week, probably you're okay. If you're drinking every night, it's going to affect your sleep. It's also going to affect your decision making. It's going to affect your brain. Healthy vitamin D and omega-3. Why don't you take that one? Well, when vitamin D and omega-3 work right, um, your brain is healthier. Mm -hmm. And uh, you should have your vitamin D level checked. Most people, most of my patients take about 5,000 international units a day, and most of my patients take about 2,000 units of 2,000 milligrams of omega-3 fatty acids a day. Brain MD, our company, makes a great mm -hmm. vitamin D that's 5,000 international units per little gel cap. We make Omega-3 Power. It's one of our best-selling products. But we also make Omega-3 Power Squeeze, which is a liquid fish oil that just tastes and for kids, amazing. That's really good. It tastes amazing. And right now, especially during the day, the age of COVID, you don't want low vitamin D. It's or critical. low Omega-3 fatty acids. Yeah. Uh, you also want to avoid trigger foods like dairy and uh, gluten and surround yourself with like-minded people. What do you say? People, people are... are contagious. So um, this is really important. If you are, it's like the person I talked about that I was trying to help. Um, the minute that that person who had been doing so well for almost a year started hanging out with people who were drinking, they went right back to where they were. So people are contagious. If you are an alcoholic and you are trying to not drink, you don't go hang out in a bar with alcoholics, right? You try to hang out with people who are going to elevate you. People are contagious. And then this is sort of the most complex concept of the night, but I really think it's important. This is about protecting your pleasure centers. And I call step seven, drip dopamine, don't dump it. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that is so critical to your happiness and your decision-making ability. It's actually made uh, in an area called the ventral tegmental area, on the top of your brainstem, and it sends signals to your pleasure centers and to your frontal lobes. So it's involved in two big circuits. In your reward circuit, love this. So Tana's involved in the reward circuit in my <laughs> brain. Um, she gives me a lot of dopamine. But I need to have a control circuit, um, which you think of as the break. That if I get a stupid thought, I don't say it. Mm -hmm. If I get a stupid idea, I don't do it because <laughs> it doesn't fit the goals I have for my life. So dopamine is critical for both reward, pleasure, and mm -hmm. control. And um, dopamine is involved in pleasure and euphoria. I look at you and get a squirt of dopamine. It's involved in joy. 
and reward. It's also, what cocaine releases. It also involved in motiva- motivation. There it is. Motivation and focus and smooth motor movement. So it actually allows you to keep your hands still Mm -hmm. um, or walk in a good way. So it's involved in the connection between your mind and your muscles. Mm -hmm. When dopamine is um, high, we jump when we get excited, like when Kobe makes a three-pointer at the end of a game. Mm. Um, You and I used to go a lot. When dopamine is too low because you've worn out your dopamine neurons, this is really important. If you press on the pleasure centers too much, too often, think cocaine or pornography or affairs or fame, which we'll talk about, um, it actually can wear out those neurons and people get depressed. And they don't care. Their energy's low, their focus is down, and they can even have movement disorders, tremors, like in Parkinson's right. disease. So you think in Parkinson's, they actually have all of these symptoms because it's like they don't have enough gas. Mm-hmm. So when they put their foot on the gas pedal, nothing really happens that's mm-hmm. great. So here's the cycle of addiction. You engage in actions that increase dopamine. Cocaine, marijuana, alcohol, gambling, shopping for some people, not you, thank God. Um, So engage in a behavior that increases dopamine. For you, it could be exercise. Oh, it used to be extreme, like two and a half hours a day. Yeah. Yeah. Dopamine works on the pleasure centers. So you have these areas in your brain, this area called the nucleus accumbens on the left and right that responds to dopamine and you feel great. But when it wears off, you then feel withdrawal. You feel flat, you feel depressed. And so you then re-engage in the behavior even if it's bad for you. Mm-hmm. And, um, but as you keep engaging in the behavior, so with intense stimulation, the pleasure centers need more and more excitement in order to feel anything mm-hmm. at all. So drug addicts over time, they don't use to get high. They use to stop feeling awful. Mm-hmm. So you want to take care of your pleasure centers. And how you do that is one, you know what you want. You admit when you're out of control. You get your brain right. You forgive yourself. You stop the self-shaming stuff. Um, You know your brain type. You know the neuroscience of control. And you limit low-value dopamine-producing activities like caffeine, nicotine, excessive television, excessive video games. They have just hijacked the brains of our young boys. Undisciplined digital behavior, scary movies. These are all things that are low-value dopamine activities. And then, so what dumps dopamine? Falling in love. Mm-hmm. I mean, it totally makes you off um, for the first couple of months. Pornography? Pornography does it. Um, jumping out of airplanes. Mm-hmm. Um, racing motorcycles. Has anybody watching, I'm really curious about this, ran with the bulls? <laughs> it's like, what is the point? I, I, I'm confused. <laughs> It just seems like the dumbest thing. <laughs> or your mother was like this with scary movies. Oh, she used to take me to go see. I still can't get the vision of the hills have eyes out of my head from when I was nine years old. Like, I just, why? Why do you do that to a child? Oh, and Silent Scream. People probably don't even know what that movie is. I will never forget it. 
Like, I just, she was addicted to scary movies and used to take me to them as a child. It was terrible. Virtually all drugs of abuse uh, increase dopamine. They dump dopamine, which is why they're problematic. If you're afraid of drugs, you should be because they hijack your brain. And even though marijuana is legal, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, because uh, unless you're really careful, you can lose control over it. Um, also, you mentioned pornography, having illicit affairs, video games, and fame. You know, I've been blessed to see some young superstars. And over time, fame dumps dopamine, mm -hmm. wears out your brain, making them more vulnerable to addictions. Um, but the worst dopamine dumper. Because it is the most available and the most common probably is sugar. So I'm, we're just loading our kids up with sugar all day long, especially right now. I think probably more than ever. Um, but I used to, this was always a personal pet peeve of mine because I would see um, parents running into the bakery on the way, like across the street from the school when I was taking my daughter to school when she was little. They'd run in, grab donuts and muffins and bagels and whatever, you know, take their kids over to school. And then I knew some of these parents who were like always complaining about their kids having ADD and having learning problems. And there were, this was a huge problem. And I'm like, how fair is it to the child to label them with this when they don't even get a fair shot at being able to focus. So before you start labeling them with ADD and, and learning dis disorders, which they may have, but at least get their diet right so they can start off focusing in the morning. Because it's not only a dopamine problem, it affects their ability to focus and concentrate. So um, we want to get this, we want to get this under control. Well, and I think the relentless courage of a scared child, you actually talk about diet in there and you are unhealthy well, diet. From the standpoint of my own growing up. Right. My experience. Um, I think that's your best book overall, but the Omni Diet really talks about the science of nutrition right. in the brain, and the Brain Warrior's Way cookbook are just very special books. The, right. You know, I think you should be so proud of them. I'm proud of them. Um, okay, so let's talk about appropriate Dopamine. You want to engage in high value dopamine activities like sunlight and vitamin D. And if you're not in a place, because it's winter, um, where you can go out in the sun, Brain MD makes the Bright Minds light therapy lamp that we have sold thousands of them uh, because they're just really great. Be in front of it a half an hour in the morning supports your mood, mm -hmm. your focus, your energy, um, and your sleep. Mm -hmm. Exercise, uh, that's just critical for both of us. Well, we just talked about this. So sunlight and exercise, um, those are the first two up here. And I just we just talked about this the other day. So my favorite thing to do is to do like hit type training outside in the sun. Because when I do, if I go outside, so and I, define hit for the so audience. it's like high intensity interval training for not for a long duration though. So for like you know, 45 minutes of hit training um, between 30 and 45 minutes, but outside, it does something different to your brain when you are able to do it outside in nature, outside in the sunshine. And I even came in and I told you, I'm like, you want me to do this <laughs> because it just makes me a different human when I'm able to go outside you mean and like exercise. Nicer? Just nicer more romantic more cuddly <laughs> let's leave it at that <laughs> outside let's yeah, go, go all right we're done <laughs> uh meditation mm -hmm. yoga uh meditation has been huge for you mm -hmm. um massage i'd love that pleasurable music green tea oregano Magnesium. Every night. Brain MD Every night. makes magnesium chewables that are great. And there's actually a new study out on the equivalent to two of those a day was found to be an effective treatment for depression. Well, for me, they help me sleep. So. Which is an effective <laughs> treatment for depression. Yes. 
And so it's better to drip dopamine. So a constant stream of little things that make you happy rather than dump it where you're wearing out your pleasure centers. So things like purpose and volunteering. I think the live chats you and I do. I mean, we do them because we know it's a value. Right, answering questions people. for people, right. Sunlight, <clears throat> lasting love, which is what we have. Thank you. Um, love with your kids. Teamwork at work. I'm so proud of my teams at Amen Clinics and Brain MD how they manage the pandemic, mm -hmm. um, gratitude, traveling. No. Well, can't do that at the <laughs> But a lot of people have seen America in their car where oh, they never had done it Apparently you can't buy those little, um, what do you call them, the the sprinter vans? You can't buy those little conversion vans right now. They're like back ordered forever. So that's kind of cool. Pumpkin seeds. We talked about green tea, omega-3 fatty acids, and the supplement SAMe um, and L-tyrosine help to boost dopamine in the brain. So um, drip dopamine, don't dump it. I hope you understand what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. And then step eight is eliminate the pushers and the user dragons. Mm -hmm. So bad and good habits are a team sport. This is really important. So turn accomplices into friends. Um, so now you need lots of accomplices right. to start and sustain bad habits. So friends, mentors, coaches, they all support your positive behavior. So you need to ask for their help. This is really important. Accomplices encourage your negative behaviors. They're complicit with your negative behaviors. Um, but adding friends improves your chances for success up to 40%, especially with addictions. So who are the accomplices in your life? Uh, well, if you're talking in society, food companies, if you're talking about personally, um, you know, I've eliminated a lot of accomplices from my life. Um, but they're the people who want to take you out for a drink. They're the people yeah, don't have on Friday night that go, hey, you've been good all week. Yes, yeah, so you're talking splurge. to them. <laughs> um, yeah, that's not. Yeah, no, I don't mean you necessarily. Right. But I'm just trying to get people to think who are the accomplices in your life? Who supports your bad habits? Mm -hmm. It can be painful to. It can be painful to tell people you love them and you'll miss them. <laughs> but for your own success and your own sanity, sometimes you have to do that. I love you and I will miss you. If they can't support your success, if they can't support your sobriety, if they can't support you know, you being a better person, then that might be a person you can't have as your And a lot friend. of people make fun of the people who are really serious about their diet. And those are people that you probably want to say, I love you and I'll miss you. I'll love you from a distance. Yeah, and I like what Drew Carey said. Drew Carey, the comedian who got really healthy, said eating crappy food isn't a reward, it's a punishment. Mm -hmm. And the nutritional gatekeeper, you, you have to make that person yeah. a friend. If they're not, it's really hard to get well from any addiction. Yep. So if you want to change, you need to change your friends or turn the accomplices into friends or with people you don't spend any time with. I remember when I got serious about getting healthy, my dad, my dad made fun of me a lot and it irritates me. And I loved him a lot. But when I got healthy, he would like, oh, you know, you're a nut doctor because he didn't really want me to be a psychiatrist. And now you're a health nut. And he's like, what's with you in the nuts? Um, and it, it made me spend less time with him until later in his life when he got sick and he turned to me because I was the health nut. <laughs> and he's like, I'm sick of being sick. What do you want me to do? And then he did everything I asked him to do because he's a stubborn old fart. And, <laughs> um, and then we got close. But you have to be very careful with the people you spend time yep. with. If they demean you, if they belittle you, if they criticize you, you know, heck, you have a choice. 
There are a whole bunch of people in the world. So the only people who don't respect your boundaries when you are trying to get healthy or be better or stay sober, the only people who don't respect your boundaries are people who benefit from you not having them. And you need to remember that. So it's, it's important for you to establish those boundaries and understand that if people aren't respecting your boundaries, when they are making you better, it's because they benefit from you not having them. And so ultimately, we want you to list who are your accomplices and who are your friends. And then focus on spending more time with your friends and less time with the accomplices. And that's how you get healthy and beat addictions. And you're like, but it's a pandemic and there's no one to spend time with. And I would argue there's a whole bunch of people to spend time with. You just have to be thoughtful in how you do it. Mm -hmm. All right, step nine. We're getting close. Kill the ants and the little lies. So I've talked about ants for many years. Tan and I have talked about them. Automatic negative thoughts, the thoughts that come into your mind automatically and ruin your day. And um, in school, they need to teach mm -hmm. how to discipline your mind and not let the ants stack, link, and, breed. and attack right. you. Because negative thoughts breed mm -hmm. and then they create super ants that attack mm -hmm. you um, question your thoughts write them down whenever you feel sad mad nervous or out of control write down your thoughts and ask yourself if it's true there's a section in the new book oh i love this quote um, permitting your life to be taken over by another person is like letting the waiter eat your dinner. I love that. And there's an exercise here. So I go through each of the ants in detail. But it's called how challenging a hundred of your worst thoughts can change your life. And then I actually give an example of one of my patients, I give an example of lots of his thoughts, but I know it was that exercise that he did in a diligent way where he just doesn't think in the same bad habits that he did before. Mm -hmm. And so these are the questions we have you ask for each of those bad thoughts you have. Take a picture of the screen, like is it true? Is it absolutely true? How do you feel when you believe the thought? I wonder, if, how are we doing for time? Yeah, should uh, we do an example? Yeah, we should do an example. Do you have one? Just pick any thought. I mean, do you want me to be the person? Okay, so I will never be able to, I, I'll never be successful. Is that true? Yes. Is it absolutely true? The 100% certainty you know more than God? Well, I can't know more than God, so... So it's not absolutely true. Well, it Which feels, just cracks it feels it a little. true, but okay, maybe not. Yeah, but feelings lie. They lie all the time. Okay. Could be gas. Um, <laughs> how do you feel when you believe the thought? That I'll never be successful. I feel like a failure. I feel like giving up. I feel um, alone. I feel sad, depressed. Um, hopeless, helpless, hopeless, worthless. Hope, yeah. And how would you feel if you didn't have the thought, if you couldn't have the if thought? If I could never think the thought, I'll never be successful, um, I would feel hope. I'd feel free. I'd feel excited about the future. I feel motivated. So that thought doesn't serve you at all? No. So, and you don't have to do this with all of your thoughts. Just do the ones that are hurting you whenever you feel sad, thoughts, yeah. mad, nervous, or out of control. So let's take the original thought, I'll never be successful, and turn it to its opposite. 
Um, I will be successful. I will be successful. So not the narcissistic opposite, which is I'll be wildly successful, but it's I will be successful. And do you have any evidence where that is in fact true? Well, what if they're only just small? Well, what if? It's so the small things that drip dopamine. Okay, so I, can use, big small, things so I that, can use small examples? It's the big things that dump dopamine and wear okay. out your pleasure center. So what if it's small as like, well, I made the cheerleading team when I was in high school? Well, that's sort of a big deal if you were in high school. Okay. Um, well, I got really good grades in college. And you got into nursing school. Well, I'm just giving examples for... <laughs> Um, okay. And what else? Because if you can find one example, then you can find two. And if you find two, you generally can find four. And if you can find four, you blow that thought up. And they're okay. little ant bits all over the place. <laughs> okay. So, um, I mean, I guess I've been successful with some of my relationships. Yeah, like one sort of important one. <laughs> um, okay, so anything else? Well, I can think of a whole bunch of things if we're talking about you. So... Um, like you're an amazing mother, and you've been an incredible wife, and you've helped millions of people oh, through public you. television. and your book that I'm so proud of. It's too often people get wed to the outcome, and I'm guilty of that. I mean, I want my book to do really well. I want Tana's book to do really well. But it's not about that. It's about feeling purposeful every day. The big things dump dopamine, which means when you get famous, you need to get careful. Right, because even famous people have that thought. That's actually not one of my thoughts right now. It was at one time, and I picked that one because so many people have that thought, especially right now. Um, so, you know, the opposite of that is um, I will be successful. Or you can even use I am successful. Or um, what would another turnaround to that be? Another turnaround, Tom? Um successful I'm another turnaround to I will never be successful is there another turnaround to that well so turn around to the opposite I will be successful that is about you um, you will never be successful and if you don't feel successful you'll never celebrate the success mm -hmm. of other people because the jealousy and dragon mm. will get you yeah and now we have a whole bunch of little lies. I don't think we'll go over all of them, but these are the lies people tell themselves. My memory is no good. That's normal. That's actually not normal. It's a mm -hmm. sign your brain is deteriorating. Everything in moderation. No, not everything in moderation. Cocaine and affairs in moderation is a really bad Arsenic, thing. cyanide. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's too hard. And what we often say is being sick is hard. Getting well is the easiest part if you do it soon enough. Um, I don't want to deprive myself. But what is deprivation? So you need to, it, on that one, you have to define deprivation. Is deprivation really a cupcake or is deprivation not being healthy to be with your family? Is it not being able to, to live your life with passion and purpose and energy? Um, define deprivation. I like that. Um, or I can't eat healthy because I travel. Now, there's a lot less of that these days. <laughs> but we're always amused by this one because we travel a lot or used to travel a lot. And it can be challenging, but that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean you can't do it. My whole family is overweight. It's in my genes. This is one of the biggest lies. Genes account only for 20 to 30 percent of your health. The vast majority of health problems are driven by the bad decisions you make. Um, I can't afford to get healthy. So being sick, I can tell you personally, being sick is one of the most expensive things you will ever experience. As someone who had cancer, I had to drop out of school. I had to quit my job. I had to file for bankruptcy. There's nothing more expensive than that. 
and I'm not saying it, I mean studies have actually shown it's what a dollar eighty dollar twenty five dollar twenty five a day um, more expensive to eat healthy than to eat poorly but you do have to prioritize so that is one of those lies if you really want to do something you will find a way and if you really don't want to do something you will find an excuse or I can't find the time to work out well with a sharper mind you'll actually save time if you work out um, this is the holiday drive. Wait, wait, if you wait, I need to back up to that one. If you're really busy, you don't have time not to work out. If you're really busy, you don't have time not to eat healthy. You can't afford not to eat healthy. Preach it, sister. <laughs> so the next one, it's Memorial Day, it's Easter, it's Fourth of July, it's Labor Day, it's Thanksgiving, Christmas, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's always an excuse to hurt yourself. When you stop believing every thought you have, the quality of your decisions will go up and your health will get so much better. All right, step 10. Get help from those who have tamed their own dragons. So this is about mentors, and I know you mm. like this one I'm a lot. I'm big on mentors. So I, I love this idea that when you, you know, you might be really good at some area of your life, good, then you mentor someone else in that area. But find the area, be honest with yourself, identify the areas in your life that you're not as strong with. And that's what the, you know, if you take the dragon quiz, you'll figure out where your dragons are. Those are your areas that need work. Um, and then you pick a mentor. And I know like an example for me is I'm really good at working. I'm really good. I actually think I'm pretty good at parenting. I'm good at a lot of areas. But one place that I feel like I, I need help, I need some bolstering, is in my spiritual circle. So I pick people who are really strong in those circles, right? I want, I want mentors. Now, I happen to like having mentors in all areas of my life. So I have mentors in all areas, but especially that area. Because that's the area where I feel like I need a little extra support. Pick people that will help you achieve your goals and success leaves clues right so you don't have to reinvent the wheel just copy what other people have done that have done what you need to do and saying sorry is critical so this is in the original 12 steps and i like this one a lot that when you've hurt people um make amends uh, say you are sorry that you wish it could have been different and you're going to work hard to make it different mm -hmm. and then step 12 is you got to give it away um it's i think one of the biggest lessons you and i have learned in working here at amen clinics working uh with rick warren at saddleback church with the daniel plan is once you get this information you have to share it because it is in the act of giving that you actually create your own support group, making it more likely you will stay on the program forever. Well, and anytime you teach something, you are that's when you really learn it. I mean, even in nursing school and medical school, see one, do one, teach one, right? Because that's how you learn it. That's how you actually not just learn it. That's how you internalize it. Okay. So what do you think? Uh, 12 simple steps. They're all in your brain is always listening. They're also embedded in Tana's book, The Relentless Courage of a Scared Child. I don't think it was a mistake that they actually made the covers look close. Yeah, uh, it was very, if you together. believe in coincidence, they came out at the same time, but they actually fit so well together. And that's why we did the public television show with both books together. Um, which is airing now nationwide so check your local public television stations uh if you order the book between now and sunday march 7th uh, we'll give you four free bonuses james can you put those up on the screen um you'll get five worksheets uh, the 12 principles of amen clinics the science of change and 12 of the most important tiny habits. So the smallest thing you can do today that will make the biggest <laughs> difference, six feel better fast techniques, how to know your dragons, and a guide to supplementing your brain. You also get a special invitation. This is like invitation only uh, to a special event Tana and I are gonna do where we answer your questions for two hours on March 17th. 
Um, you get the hypnosis audio downloads. You can start listening to them immediately. They're so helpful. And a free coupon for a bottle of Happy Saffron. You pay the shipping. But uh, once you start this, you won't stop. Uh, we love the stories we get from this. And uh, anything that helps your mood, your memory, and your sexuality, I just think... I'm taking that every day. <laughs> so um, order the book from any of these great places. Put in your order number online at yourbrainisalwayslistening.com, and uh, you can download the gifts immediately. Okay. Do you have any questions? Me? Yeah. I don't have questions. What do? Let's read the questions from... We have questions. The group. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can go get to the questions. All right, here we go. Question number one. Where can I buy a copy of your new book? <laughs> Anywhere great books are sold. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Target, Books a Million. Um, why does the mind go offline during trauma situations? Oh, that's interesting. Um, Can I have some of your water? Yeah. Um, I would have to say maybe survival. Give us the neuroscience. Um, during trauma situations, endorphins go way up. Endorphins block pain, mm. but they also space you out. Oh, interesting. It's a natural protective mechanism. Oh, that's wild. Do you like that? Yeah, that was good. Aren't you attracted to guys Yes, that are I am. Smart? I really like smart guys. <laughs> you knew that. You are not attracted to the jocks, even though I played football <laughs> in high school. You were attracted to the nerds. Yeah. Amen Clinic says the world's largest database of brain scans related to behavior. Yes, we do. How has the brain imaging work changed your practice as a psychiatrist? <laughs> it's changed everything. I do. Um... I don't just reach for my prescription pad to help you. I want to get your brain right. I want to get the physical functioning of your brain right, and then I want to get your mind right, and then I want to get your relationships right, and then I want to make sure you have a deep sense of meaning and purpose. And so it has changed virtually everything I do. Um, Oh, please. Um, a theme throughout the book is taming dragons. Why did you choose dragons? I loved Game of Thrones. <laughs> well, and the work of, of Sharon May. So, I mean, Game of Thrones made it fun, but um, our friend Sharon May um, introduced us to this concept a while back, and it was fantastic. Yeah, we did a podcast with Sharon. She's actually working on a book on dragons and relationships. Mm -hmm. And Amen University may actually do a course nice. on dragons and relationships. Yeah, she's really good. And I just, I love the idea so much. I started thinking about, well, what kind of dragons? Right. And, you know, that's where we came up with the 13 dragons from the past. And then the they, them, and other dragons. Thank you. And... Um, there are 13 dragons from the past. Which are the most common during the pandemic? The anxious dragon by far. The responsible dragon. The abandoned, invisible, and insignificant dragon. The grief and loss dragon. Um, the wounded dragon. You're kind of naming a lot of them. And the death dragon. <laughs> Actually, we've had... 30,000 people take the dragon wow. quiz, knowyourdragons.com, and it's a very high percentage anxious, abandoned, invisible, insignificant, that's mine, um, responsible, grief and loss, uh, and the death dragon, especially for children, mm -hmm. the, the, like never before. Um, 
How do people tame the anxious dragon, which is so common today? You want to share? Um, well, I, ha I definitely have the anxious dragon. I think that you need to talk about taming it. You helped me tame mine. No, I helped you tame your black widow dragon. Oh, stop it. I'm not a black widow. <laughs> she was so hard to get. When we were first together, she'd come and then she'd go. And yes, it's all in the book. It's all in the book. <laughs> it's all in the <laughs> relentless courage. I should have created a black widow dragon. It's not a black... Because okay, I am the black widow tamer. You are not a black widow tamer. <laughs> I you're am. No, you think you're so proud of yourself. I was not a black widow. <laughs> all right. Next question. Oh, no. Taming the anxious dragon. So many of the things we talked about tonight, um, meditation, mm -hmm. diaphragmatic breathing, hypnosis, um, not believing every stupid thought you have, positivity bias training that we talked about last time. I think the, the, the easiest way to tame the anxious dragon is to get your breathing under control. And there's a very specific pattern Three seconds in, hold it for a second. Six seconds out, hold it out for a second. Three seconds in, six out, hold at the top and the bottom. Do it 10 times. Do it just two minutes, two or three times a day. Your level of anxiety will significantly drop. It's being intentional of training your nervous system. You do not need to be held hostage by the dragons that are stealing your life. And of course, we've already talked about exercise. For me, exercise is one of the most important things I do to manage anxiety. Um, so short, intense bursts of exercise can be very, very helpful for anxiety. So even like walking as fast as right. you can for a minute. Or, or sprinting. Sprinting right. for 30 seconds. Right. Um, um, yeah. What has, how has isolation fueled the dragons? It's actually fueled the hopeless and helpless dragon, where you just feel like this is never going to end. Maybe you can talk about TLC. Oh, temporary, local, and controllable. So temporary, local, and controllable. If you can see things, as t it's important that you see them as temporary, local, and controllable for you to feel like you've got control of it, um, which is interesting because it's not really local, it's global. <laughs> but you can chunk it down. So when I, th like I've, just like everybody, so had people this who thought, don't do well in the pandemic, they feel see like it's never going to end. It's permanent. Right, it's permanent. This it's is never going to end. And right. they have no control. So what what I do is if I, when I've had that thought, because I've had that thought, like I'm over it already. This is never going to end. Oh, my God. Like you just you let your brain just go kind of wild. But if you can chunk it down like, OK, hold on. It's almost like I walk outside. I ground myself like I see the hummingbirds drink a glass of tea and it's, or a cup of tea. And it's like, OK, in my home, when I'm sitting here, everything is fine. So this is not go nothing lasts forever. Right. So it's temporary. Nothing lasts forever. At some point, Including this is us. all going to. Right. At, we're all going to end at some point. It's going to end at some point. It's temporary. It's local. So I chunk it down to in my home what I can control. I focus on what I can control, not on what I can't control. So I just find the things I can control in the moment. And then I suddenly feel more like grounded. Which is basically the serenity prayer, TLC. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Mental health is about discernment. What can I do to make this better? And I know some of you hate those people that are like Pollyanna. Um, <laughs> Pollyanna is Pollyanna. actually my no, favorite movie. I can't watch that movie one more time. I love it. Um, but it could be why I'm a bit happier than you are. Yeah, you won't watch Taken anymore with me, so. <laughs> you know, for each of the dragons, uh, this is a part of the book I don't talk about much. 
But for each of them, there are movies that they like. And one of the reasons I did the movies is Tana's primary dragon is the judgmental dragon. It's, no, you decided it's my primary dragon. <laughs> I've got 13 of them. Why is that you have one? 10. Oh, yeah, 10. I've got 10 out of 13. Why does that one have to be my primary dragon? Well, because I decided. Because you decided, right. No. And the movies these dragons love or vengeance No, movies. he calls it vengeance. I call it justice. Like what? <laughs> like Rambo and Taken, Taken. law-abiding citizen. <laughs> and w what happened justice. is I was working on the book, and I and Rambo came out, the last, hopefully the final Rambo. And there oh, was, don't say that. Shame on you. And we, we had the choice to either watch Green Book, which won the Academy Award. Green Book was uh, great, but... Or Rambo, and she's like, oh, no, we're watching <laughs> Rambo. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, the dragons like movies. And then, you know, like... The no, he knows if he wants to put me in a really good mood, it's got to be like, yeah. And the death dragon, what movie does the death dragon like? Um, Heaven is for real, ghost, the five people you meet in heaven... Um, Harold and Maude, The Bucket List, Driving Miss Daisy, Cocoon, and On Golden Pond. Those are the... Anyways, each dragon has a movie. How are we doing? All right. The sec There's a section in the book on the dragon tamer. Tell us about that. So it's actually... I finished the book with the dragon tamer, and... It's so important. It's the front part of your brain, and it's the largest part of your brain. It's 30% of the human brain, 11% of the chimpanzee brain. And like a half of a percent of my cat's brain. 7% of your dog's brain. 3% of the cat's Not my brain. cat. Oh, no, he's very smart. No, he's not. He's trying to kill you. <laughs> he's, he's trying smart. to kill me. 1% <laughs> um, of the mouse's brain. And people who are sociopaths, it's actually not 30%. It's more like 27%. They have slower um, activity in oh, the front part of their brain. So when you have a good prefrontal cortex, you have empathy. Mm. You have forethought, you have judgment, and you have ethics and morality. And when it's low, either from a head injury or toxin, um, you just don't have the empathy for other people. You don't see how your behavior impacts them, and you don't care. Mm. Um, you actually have lower sweat gland activity. Oh, interesting. Um, which is why lie detectors are not admissible in court. So lie detectors can be really helpful for normal people, but not for But for the people that they're most, that we need them for most, there's the ones they that don't work. They don't work. work. Oh, interesting. Right. Um, they have slower heart rates. Um, so less sweat well, gland activity. Well, then you activity. know I am not a sociopath because I have a high heart rate and I sweat like crazy because I'm Always like I think I don't know if it's menopause or thyroid, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a sociopath. You are not. <laughs> there are there are black widow tendencies. So. Oh please. <laughs> anyway, 15 years ago. Um, when your dragon tamer is weak, you don't supervise yourself. Um, you're what people say. Oh, she has no filter. Um, stupid words or actions, lack goals, erratic behavior, lack of persistence. So you start mm. lots of things but don't finish lots of things. Easily distracted, poor judgment, low empathy, lack of insight, and trouble learning from mistakes. And the problem with a weak dragon tamer, school failure, divorce, job failure, legal issues, speeding tickets, people think getting... Help is expensive. These things are yeah. expensive. Uh, getting help is just an investment. Um, incarceration, chronic lateness, relapse from addiction, procrastination. Um, and what hurts the dragon tamer? Aging. 
inflammation, anything that lowers blood flow. So the bright minds, risk factors, head trauma, toxins, obesity. Um, so there's a whole section in the book on how to tame your dragons. Um, I love this question. Um, can you reverse brain damage caused from drinking or smoking weed? Now, people don't want to hear smoking weed can cause brain damage. And, and I don't want to tell you that because, quite frankly, I get way too many haters whenever <laughs> I talk about marijuana. We just posted an um, Instagram video with Coach Jeremy. And in one day, it had 72,000 views. <laughs> and it's like... So why you shouldn't smoke weed? Because it decreases blood flow to every area of your brain. And a lot of and people go, well, can I get it back? And I've seen a lot of damaged brains. I just saw someone this week who was an alcoholic and uh, then had a bad head injury. And you could see his brain's headed. He's right. headed for Alzheimer's disease or some form of dementia. And he's sort of on the cusp. If he like gets serious and does the things I ask him to do, probably can get a whole bunch better. But if he waits three years to do it, he's probably not gonna get a whole bunch better. So it's not at any point your brain can get better. No, at some point there's like the point no, no return, return because if the dragon tamer, if you kill the dragon tamer, you're not gonna be able to control your behaviors. So the sooner you know and the sooner you start, the better chance you have. All right, two more questions. What research is new in the book that you can't find in the others? We well, can't find the dragons. In any of the other books, I have never written like this before. So the dragons, I wrote about their origin stories and what triggers them and how they cause you to react and how to tame them and what movies they like. I even have meditations and affirmations for each of the dragons. So if we go to the judgmental dragon, um, I just open you right up to it. You keep going right to that one. What? And I you keep trade. Looking uh, at me. Do you want to hear the affirmations? I think I know them, but go ahead. <laughs> I trade judgment for understanding. I release judgment so I can be free. I treat people in pain with compassion, not more pain. I am a role model for what I want to see in the world. I foster peace in this situation, so there will be more peace in the world. Do you like those? I do. Or for the death dragon, I will live a life that matters. I will live life fully and fearlessly. I will be present today in all I do. And the death dragon helps you know that. It's there is an end. So what can I do today mm -hmm. to enjoy it? Death teaches me that if something is meaningful, I do it. But if it's not meaningful, I don't do it. Death is just the next stage of eternal life. I like that. I actually stole that from Viktor Frankl. Mm, I know, it's a great book. interview from later in his life. Um, we actually did a podcast mm -hmm. uh, on Viktor Frankl um, that I love so much. Um, death teaches me that if something is meaningful, I do it. But if it's not meaningful, I don't do it. Except, of course, watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> all right. We are grateful for all of you. Thank you for being with us. Tana and I are going to do more of these special events. Uh, write in about the topics you would like to see uh, for us to do. Just recently, we did one on your book on overcoming anxiety, depression, trauma, and grief. We did one on love and logic. Uh, on cool. parenting with love and logic. Uh, we just love that course mm -hmm. so much. Uh, we did one on the dragons from the past and 
this one. So tell us, what events would you like us to do and even speakers you want us to try and get to teach with us? Uh, this is a very important time. We want you to get your brain healthy, your mind healthy, your relationships healthy, all knowing why you're on the planet. Mm -hmm. to, um, as Tan often says, you have to know your why, so you'll do the why. All right, everybody, take care. Have a good night. See you next time. Are you feeling anxious, stressed, depressed, or overwhelmed? Who isn't with the current pandemic and other recent stressful events? I've spent my life healing people's brains, and I am here to tell you that it is possible to regain a sense of calm and control over your mind. I'm Dr. Daniel Amen, a double board certified psychiatrist, founder of Amen Clinics, host of 15 popular shows about the brain on public television, and a 12 time New York Times bestselling author. My books have been successful because I empower people to take ownership over their minds by making neuroscience easy to understand and offer you practical solutions I use with my own patients to help them have a better brain, a better mind, and a better life. All of my best strategies are now available to you, and my new book, Your Brain is Always Listening. Tame the hidden dragons that control your happiness, habits, and hangups. It comes out March 2nd, and when you order now, you'll get some very special bonuses, including my best training and support resources to help you immediately feel happier, calmer, and more in control of your own emotions. Your brain is literally always listening and responding to the hidden dragons that breathe fire on your emotional brain and unless you recognize and deal with them, they can steal your happiness, spoil your relationships, and sabotage your health. Your brain is always listening. We'll teach you how to tame the dragons from the past that ignite your most painful emotions, such as the abandoned invisible or insignificant dragons. This is one of my primary dragons the inferior flawed dragons, the anxious and wounded dragons, the should and shaming dragons, the grief and loss and hopeless and helpless dragons, and my favorite, the ancestral dragons, where the issues you have are in fact not your issues, but belong to past generations. For each of these dragons, I give you their origin story, what triggers them, how they cause you to react, and most importantly, how to tame each one of them. The book also explores how your dragons are always battling other people's dragons. This can really mess up your relationships. I'm going to teach you how to recognize and control them in relationships. A big challenge that came about with the pandemic relates to the addicted dragons. So this book will give you a brand new 12-step program to tame them based on the latest neuroscience. By ordering the book now, you'll receive four free gifts, including a special playbook of five worksheets that can help you be happier now, access to a two-hour event with me personally, where I answer questions from only people who pre-ordered the book. You'll also get access to Magnificent Mind with Medical Hypnosis, which contains six hypnosis sessions I do for you, just like I do for my patients, including ones for anxiety, sleep, chronic pain, weight loss, smoking, and peak performance. And my favorite gift to you is a free coupon for a bottle of Happy Saffron at BrainMD. You just pay the shipping but this is a $49.95 value and is my favorite nutritional supplement, which I take every day. The research on saffron is spectacular, and I want you to have it when you pre-order or order the book. 
your brain is always listening. I am thrilled to be your guide and show you how to tame your dragons so that you can have the happiness, peace, and the relationships you deserve.